Come to the river, come to the river, taste and see. In my dark 
so thankful? Are you so grateful? So, so good. Come on, pursue him today. You're so, so good. There's never been anyone like you. There's never been anyone like you. never been anyone like you. You're so, so good. Come on, tell him today. There's never been anyone like you. There's never been anyone like you. You're so, so good. You're so, so good. Yeah. Oh, there's never been anyone like you. There's never been anyone like
said, you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said, you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said, you are mine. Light into every shadow, 
of this world. Come on, are you, are you thankful for the cross? Come on, church, I said, are you thankful for the cross today?
Thanks for the grateful heart today. We give thanks for the grateful heart today.
we are, God. We come before you with a grateful heart. And we offer our praise, Lord, and thanksgiving before you. You told us to enter your courts with thanksgiving, to enter your courts with praise, Lord Jesus. And so that's what we do today, God. We come before you, God, and we worship you in the way that you want to be worshiped. Lord, today is not about ourselves. It's not about how we can grow. It's not a 12-step program, a get help place, Lord. We exist for one purpose, and it's to worship you, God. So we are in this place to do that. We are in this place to worship your mighty name, God. Because you are worthy. You and you alone are worthy, God. We give you all the praise and all the honor, God. All the adoration, Lord. We pour it at your feet today. Be glorified. Be glorified in this house today, Lord God. We've come here for one reason, Lord, and one reason alone you may be glorified that you would be exalted over everything so we do that right now Lord we lift you high above everything else in our life Lord we seat you in the highest place we exalt you with thanks with a heart of gratitude God Come in this place and have your way. Come in this place and have your way. We pray that in Jesus' name. Come on, everyone said, amen. Next weekend is going to be an amazing weekend here at River of Life. I want to encourage you to be here. Uh, Zeb and Stacy, who are our campus leaders in Wyoming, are going to be on site. Zeb has finished his schooling, so we're going to commission him as a pastor next weekend, and that's going to be incredible. Ted and Ida, who are our campus leaders in Malawi, Africa, are going to be coming in this Thursday night, and they will be with us over the weekend as well. And so if you've not gotten to meet them yet, they are a powerhouse. They're an incredible couple. And so we are, going to, we are just going to have an amazing time where our, our campuses come together next weekend, and we get to celebrate what God is doing. So make it a point to be here. I, I mentioned last weekend that we we're going to start a new series next week. We're actually going to postpone that a couple of weeks because uh, we're going to do something different next week. And then the following weekend... Jonathan Martinez is going to be with us. Um, some of you, if you were here when Jonathan's been here, you know he has zero energy. The guy is like, I mean, he is super, you know, he's hard to follow because he's just so quiet. And so, no, he is, he's amazing. And so we can't wait to have him here. We're going to start the series after that weekend. But God has got some really good things in store for not just for River of Life, but I believe for our communities and so uh, come and be a part of that next weekend with us, if you would. We're going to conclude our series that we've been in for the last few weeks called No Hard Feelings. Um, and Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And we've been looking at that verse because as we talk about our heart, we're talking about our spiritual heart. And some of the things that can clog it, that can stop us, that can make us not move in the direction that we need to. And so we've been really kind of warning about some of these hard feelings that we can have and they can stop us in our tracks. And God is always wanting us to move forward. And so as we look at this, we've looked at anger and jealousy and guilt and loneliness. And last week, we spent some time looking at grief. 
And I told you from the beginning that Jesus has walked through many emotions. We watched as he walked through many. Even last week, we talked about him weeping over the death of Lazarus. But the thing about Jesus is even though he experienced emotion, he never let it guide him or, or give him direction. His direction always came from his father, and he always continued to pursue it no matter what emotion he may have been going through. And so for you, you may be sitting in the room today, and you may be in the midst of one of these hard emotions, and you're allowing it to stop you and keep you from moving to where God wants you to be. And I want to encourage you, don't let that be the case. Push forward. So today, as we, as we conclude this series, I want us to think about, we live in a time right now where it seems really hard to not allow ourselves to get to a place where we feel as though peace is something that we can't have anymore. I don't know about you, but I remember it wasn't that long ago that you could sit and you could, you could have a, a conversation with somebody, a family member, a friend, and you could talk about things like politics and not get overwhelmingly emotional or angry about it. I, some of you don't remember that time. But there was a time, there were times where, where somebody could sit across the table from each other and you could agree to disagree and you could hear each other out, but we're not in that time anymore. We've allowed emotion to, to build so much that if, if I begin to hear that you disagree with me in any way, I immediately start to put a wall up and I start to get angry and I start, right? And we just, we, we've gotten to this place where, where peace is not something that we even think we can experience anymore. Peace and tranquility seem so far removed from our day-to-day -day lives. It feels more and more like every day is a battle and a fight. And I want to look at a particular passage of Scripture that we see in Luke chapter 19, starting in verse 41. It says this, But as he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead, he began to weep. This is Jesus. How I wish today that you, that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Let's pray. God, in the next few moments, as we spend some time in your word, I pray, Father, that you will show us what we need to see. And God, I'm so grateful because, Lord, peace isn't something that's elusive. It isn't something that is far removed that we can't have. But Lord, your word shows us a map to it. So Father, I pray that we will hear it. That God, wherever we find ourselves in our journey with you, that today would be a day where we lean in and we experience more of you. God, I thank you for those who are watching in Wyoming and Malawi, those who are participating in the jail and, and in Alaska and wherever else they may be. I pray, Father God, that, that the words that, that they hear, God, will penetrate even the hardest of heart and that, God, your word would, would, would not return void and that you would do what only you can do. We praise you for that and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So here we see Jesus displaying yet another emotion. It's sadness. And he's sad because he says, listen, I wish that you would understand what it is to live in peace. He didn't say, I'm sad because peace is unavailable to you. He said, it's available, but you're not living it. It's available, but you're not seeing it. In fact, he says, he says it's hidden from you. It's not he hid it from you. It's because I believe we, just like them, allow so many other things to block our vision to not see, uh, see things the way that God sees them. We get sucked into what this world says and we begin to follow those things and because of that, we live this life that is not peaceful at all. And God is saying those things are available to you. Peace is available to you. So why would it upset him so much? Isaiah chapter nine, verse six says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. So now this is a verse that we hear mostly at Christmas time. But how many of you know just because we hear it at Christmas time doesn't mean that it doesn't apply 365 days a year? So this applies to us, and as Jesus is writing in, he knows this prophecy has been foretold that he is the Prince of Peace, and as he's writing in, he's seeing his people not at peace. So when he says, hey, I'm the Prince of Peace, I came that I can bring peace, inside of that, people are not living it out, they're not choosing it. This thing that we call free will is hard. 
Free will is tricky. I just had a conversation with somebody this week where we, where we talked about how hard life is and, and what a struggle it is and, and some of it is our own choices and all those things. But I, I had to reiterate to him, I said, this is because of free will. It isn't that God is mad or angry or any of that stuff, but when we make bad choices, we get bad consequences. And as we look at this, we see that Jesus knows that peace is available, but yet his people are choosing not to see it. They're choosing not to walk in it. In Jewish culture, peace is extremely important. In fact, to this day, if you were to go visit Israel, like some of us are going to get to do in a few weeks, you'll be greeted with the word shalom, and people think that it just means peace, but it actually is more of a question and a wish wrapped into one, do you have peace? Almost a reminder, remember, you can have peace. Peace is available to you. And I think for many of us, we've almost gotten to this place where we've just kind of said, well, it just won't ever happen for me. I'll never receive it, so I'm not even gonna shoot for it. I'm not even gonna try for it. So our verse from Isaiah says that Jesus is the prince of peace and that that peace will have no end. So if we are ambassadors of Christ, the prince of peace, then we should be at peace. Can I tell you that I believe that as we're in, in, the, in what I believe are going to be the last days, our call is strong to change the world. Yeah. The call on our life is to make a difference, to make Jesus famous, right? That's the call. But a lot of times what we do is we, we try and convince people to come to church, and I've said this in here before, but we, we don't look any different than them. So if my life doesn't look any easier than yours, or I don't seem to be doing it any better than you, then when I'm saying, hey, you should come and be a part of what, what I'm doing, there's no real reason. But what if the ambassadors of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, what if we are able to walk in peace in the midst of whatever comes our way? All of a sudden, people will see something different. And as they see something different, it's going to make them want what we have. Amen. Good. Some years back, I preached about what is stopping your peace. And I, I want to revisit a little bit of that again. I was, as I was studying for this, I really thought, you know, this is some really interesting stuff and some stuff that you can maybe hold on to that will help you with this message. So if peace is available to us, what is it that's stopping us? The first one is this, disobedience breeds turmoil rather than peace. So when I, as, as a parent, when my kids were younger, if, if let's say one of my sons was, was in high school or something and he decided that he was going to break my rules and not come home until two or three in the morning. And so I'm there waiting, he comes in the door and there I am standing there and I begin to do what I would have done, which is to scold him, to discipline him. Can you imagine in that moment if he was just like, hey, dad, can't we just be at peace? And can we, can we all just get along? Like, why do you gotta, why do you gotta make turmoil? Like, right? How many of you know, well, I won't say what would have happened in that moment. But in that moment, it isn't dad that's causing turmoil. It's disobedience that's causing turmoil. For some of you, what you need to realize is many of you are living your life not at peace, but it's not because it's not because of some external thing. It's because you're making choices that are not good choices. I used to drive too fast. Now, sometimes I still do, but not like I used to. I used to drive too fast, and I had, and I don't even know if they still make these anymore, but I had a radar detector, right? There's nothing quite like that when you are going above the speed limit. You know you're going above the speed limit, and you hear the... Of the, I still hear it in my head. <laughs> and you cram on the brake and you do what you can to get, make sure that you're going to be okay, right? But when you were driving too fast, the thing about it is you're not at peace because you're constantly, I wonder if there's something around this corner, right? right. Not because you, should be at, you shouldn't be at peace. You are breaking the law. Yeah. You are doing something wrong. And because of that, you, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's not even speeding. It's you're doing things in your life that you know are not okay, and so you're constantly having to look over your shoulder yes, 
because you don't know if you're going to get caught. Man, I just don't have any peace in my life. Well, can I tell you, listen to what his word says. Let the Holy Spirit speak into your life. And as he gives you guidance and direction, be obedient. And all of a sudden, for some of you, that's the key right there. I could end the sermon. We could call Seth back up onto the stage and we could be done because if you would just do that, you would find peace. The second thing that I believe robs us of our peace is wanting our way removes peace. Think about this for a moment. Nations war because they want to set their own rules. They want what others have. They want it the way they want it. But we can find peace by submitting ourselves to his ways. When we live our lives trying to make our own rules and trying to make it about ourselves and what we want and what we think we need and all of those things, we won't find peace. But if we can come to a place where we submit ourselves to what he wants and who he says that we are, all of a sudden, can I tell you, it removes a burden from you that God never intended you to carry. Those of you who are in the room and you've accepted Christ in your life and you said, I'm a child of God, I'm called by his name, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, the more you can learn to submit yourself to his ways, there is a, there is a stress reliever right there. <clears throat> because you don't have to fight to get your way. You just say, hey God, this is, uh, I'm submitting myself to you. And when all of a sudden things don't look the way you think they should look, you just still go, God, I'm trusting you. I believe that you're in control. I know that you care about me. I know that you have a plan for me that's bigger than me. And you begin to pray that way. And all of a sudden, when it isn't going the way you think it should go, you can still have peace in the midst of that because you're trusting someone that's way bigger than you. We want peace on our terms, but our peace is selfish. That is why we must rely on the Lord of love, forgiveness, and peace. The world seeks earthly peace, but our goal should be to seek the Prince of Peace. Amen. Isaiah 32, verse 17 says, the fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. Though hail flattens the forest and the city is leveled completely, how blessed you will be sowing your seed by every stream and letting your cattle and donkeys range free. The fruit of righteousness is peace. Think about that for a moment. What is righteousness? It means living godly, living the way that God is calling you to live. Now, hear me, because I understand we are imperfect people. We are going to screw up. I screw up every day. I mess up every day. But inside of that, if my goal is to continually try to look more and more like Jesus, if my goal is to find more and more what he, what he sees when he sees me, what he wants, when, he, when, he, when he's created me for, and all of those things, when I begin to seek righteousness, all of a sudden the fruit of righteousness is peace. You be righteous and you'll find peace. Pick your crisis, your injustice. Poverty with all its internal and external causes, the devastation of drug addiction, white collar corruption, money laundering, embezzling, insider stock trading, bribery, all of that stuff. I'm telling you right now that there can be peace in place of those things. But what happens is because we seek selfishly, all of this stuff happens. You, I mean, take a crisis that you turn on the news and you see something, you can absolutely find that there is unrighteousness, there is selfishness, right? There's people trying to make things happen for themselves instead of seeking what is good in God's eyes. If we all came to a place where we came under the authority of God, there would be complete peace. So where do those things come from? Where do these human impulses come from that drive destructive behaviors. They come from the devoid of peace of Jesus Christ. So I want to look at this real quick. I got, I got a few more points I want to make. The first one is peace is an export. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So as we look at this, Jesus exported peace to us. 
on, this is right before he's going to die. He exports peace to us. Can I tell you, when you're, when you're about to, when, when you know that it, your time is coming to a close, you, those are important things that you say. And so Jesus is saying, listen, your inheritance as a son or a daughter of me is peace. Can I, I want you to hear this because I think there's something important. Inheritance is left to the living. When I, when I, if I was to pass away, there's an inheritance for my children. There's a few hundred dollars in an Arby's coupon. It's going to be great for them. <laughs> but it's for the living. It's right. And, and you are to have it and to use it. So when Jesus says, I'm leaving you peace, he's not saying you can have it someday when you're with me. He's saying, I'm leaving it. It's for you now. I'm giving it to you and I want you to have it. I want you to live in it. I want you to walk it out. I wonder how many Christians have really come to understand the great fact that peace is our inheritance. Peace is what Jesus has left us. It is, a, it is fundamental and it cannot be taken from you in any circumstances. When Jesus leaves you something, it's yours. He even says, I'm giving it to you not as the world gives it to you. So it's yours. So if you're not at peace, if I'm not at peace, then it's something that I need to look at, right? It's not because he overlooked me. It's not because he said, peace I leave to some of you. He said, I'm leaving you peace and I want you to walk in it. So how does the world give peace? If you were troubled and you went to a doctor who was not a Christian and you asked him, hey, I, how do I gain peace? Here's what he'd tell you. He'd probably tell you, take a trip, go to Hawaii, get under a palm tree. Come on, people. <laughs> in other words, he'd say, change your circumstance. Go to a place where nothing bothers you, where everything is peaceful around you. But can I tell you, that kind of peace is great, but it's temporary. That's temporary peace. That's not what Jesus left you. He left you peace. He left you the ability that, that no matter what's going on in your life, you can experience peace. But Jesus says, I give peace right in the midst of your trouble. Why? Because he knew trouble was coming. I, I think I said this last week, but if, you're not, if there's not trouble in your life right now, it's coming. I know that's not encouraging, but it's absolutely true. We know it's true. Some of you are in the middle of trouble right now and you're like, man, I just can't wait till I get to the other side. I understand that. And you, guess what? You will get to the other side. And then you're gonna experience this amazing time where it's like, oh man, things are going pretty good. And then guess what's right around the corner? It's trouble again. Because that's life. We need to be real about it. But Jesus is saying, you can have peace even in the middle of your trouble. The other thing is, is I can impart peace to your heart, right? He's saying, I can impart peace to your heart right where you are. And, and I'm giving it to you in a way that isn't the way the world gives because the world gives conditionally. You can have peace under these conditions. Jesus said, there aren't conditions. I'm giving it to you. Think about inheritance. By the time I, if, if I pass away, I've already determined what, what my heirs will receive. It's not conditional. At that. There's no conditions. It's just this is what they're getting. Jesus says, hey, I'm giving you this peace. It's available to you. You can have it. Peace under a palm tree is easy. Peace on a stormy lake is miraculous. And can I tell you, we serve a God of miracles. The second thing you need to understand is peace is a guard. Philippians chapter four, verse seven says this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we trust in the Prince of Peace, we become guarded against the things that would normally steal our peace. That's how we know we're doing it right. If peace is an external thing that we need to, we need to go find our peace, you hear people say that, I gotta go find my peace. No, as a child of God, I've already got peace. Yes, yes. You can see it, like even as you watch people, people in your life, whether it's on social media or in real life, they'll, they'll, they'll try and seek peace. 
I'm going to find peace by, by whatever it is that will make me feel peaceful. But that is temporary. God says, listen, my peace will actually guard your heart. What does that mean? It means that when turmoil comes, if you're, if you're walking in his peace, then you can keep walking in his peace, even though there's a storm raging around you. Have you ever been around people that, that uh, are just, you know they're in a hard season, and they're not fake. I, I've been around fake people, too, who will pretend that they're not in a hard season, and I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. But what I'm talking about is people who you know, they'll say, yeah, this has been hard, but God is good, and God's in control, and I know that he's able. And all of those things, and they're not saying it as a cliche, they're saying it from their heart because they're saying, listen, I believe his word, I know that he says that I can have peace when there is no peace, and so I'm going to trust that, and I'm going to believe, and even though there's the storm is raging around me, I'm going to walk in this peace that he promised me. Isaiah 32 verse 17 says the fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. Not temporarily, not for a season. It says forever. So when we come to a place where we understand who Jesus is, so when we accept Christ, we accept who he is. And we accept the promises that he has for us. So when the world begins to, to get in your ear and begin to say, well, what if this, you know, the what if, it, it, how many of you live in the what if world a lot? So what if this goes wrong? What if that doesn't happen? What if, what if, what if, what if? And all of a sudden your peace is completely stolen from you. Well, God is saying, listen, I are, not only do I know what's gonna happen to you, I'm already there. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm with you right now. I'm seeing how you're feeling, but I'm also way ahead of you. He's, he's in yesterday. He's in tomorrow. He's in a decade. For, he's there. He's in all places, which is hard for us to wrap our puny brains around. I understand. But so he sits and as, as we watch Jesus comes in to Jerusalem and he's weeping, he's not weeping because, oh, these poor people aren't, you know, they, they can't have peace. No, he's weeping because he was like, it's here. It's available. Some of you need to hear that today because it feels so far off from you. But he has it for you. Where does peace come from? It's the fruit of righteousness, Isaiah tells us. And so does David. In Psalm 85, verse 8, it says, I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people. But let them not return to their foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, so our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness smiles down from the heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessing. Our land will yield a bountiful harvest. Listen to that huge promise. God wants good things for you. He has good plans for you. We need to trust him. We need to take him at his word. Jesus was upset because peace was within reach and yet people were blind to it. The psalmist here says that God speaks peace over us. He declares it over you. So if you're not at peace, then you need to look at why that is. It isn't because God is going back on his word because he doesn't. It isn't because that promise didn't apply to you, because that's not true. It's because you're allowing other voices in your head. You're allowing other things to supersede what his word says about you. Some of you have been in turmoil for so long, you can't even imagine what it is to be at peace. The psalmist here says that God speaks peace over your peace, gives you permission to say no to what you do not need. Hear me on this. A lot of times we're not at peace because we think that we're lacking. Well, if I could, again, if I could have that thing, I would be at peace. If I could, if I could move into a different house, that would do it. If I got a different job, then I would be at peace. Again, all temporary things. God's peace isn't temporary. It's permanent, and it means that even if you're in a job that you hate, 
you're at a place financially where you're struggling, you can still have peace. Because here's what's gonna happen. If you go, hey, if I could pay off all my debt, then I would be at peace. Go for it. You should try and pay off your debt. That's really good. But can I tell you then, there'll be something else that will rob your peace because you're putting it on things that are not him. The Prince of Peace is the one that brings you actual peace. The third thing real quick is peace helps you survive even in failure. When my confidence is in Jesus, the Prince of Peace, all of a sudden, I can persevere when things don't go my way. When my plans don't work the way I thought they were going to work, I can still be at peace. I can still walk knowing that God is good and he's in control and I'm trusting him and I'm believing in him. Now for some of you today, you gotta go back to point number one because I believe that for many of us, where our peace is robbed is because of disobedience. And some of us are disobedient because we think we, it's, it's selfishness. I think I know better. I think I know what will make me happy. But what if we came to a place where we said, I trust you, God. I trust you with my whole life. I trust that you created me and that you see me and you know me like no one else knows me. Because of that, I'm going to walk in your righteousness and I'm going to seek who you want me to be. And because of that, I'm going to find this peace that has been so elusive in my life. Scripture tells us that we can have peace where there is no peace. What does that mean? It means when a storm is raging, you can be that person that says, I'm trusting. I know that he's in control. Hear me on this. This is hard. But if we can learn to do this, it changes everything. Because what, what's typical, what we want to do is, when it's hard, we panic. When a storm is raging, we batten down the hatches and we, and we try and figure out what we're going to do. And some of us blame God for the storm. We go, God, why? If you were a loving God, why would you... But as believers, as children of the Most High King, if we go, God, I don't know why the storm is here, but I trust you. I know that, that A, you can speak to a storm and it stops. I've seen it. I heard it. I know it to be true. But if that's not your will, if you want the storm to rage, then call me out on the water. Let me walk with you on it. And I'm going to be at peace knowing that I'm with you. There's peace in the storm. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes with me for these closing moments. I really believe that there are some that are participating with us today and you have found yourself in a place where there is a storm raging in your life even today. Some of you can't remember the last time you actually felt at peace. And my prayer for you today and my hope for you is that you heard what I'm saying because God's word is clear. He wants you to be at peace. He has peace for you. I think about Jesus coming into Jerusalem and just sadness overwhelms him because he knows what the people are missing. We don't have to miss anymore. Put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. As we wrap up this time together, I'm going to ask you to just keep your eyes closed for just a moment. I just, I feel like this wasn't what my plan was for this moment, but I really feel like there may be some in the room today and you've not been in a place where you've submitted yourself to God. What does that mean? You said, I want to be a follower of Jesus. Some of you have been turned off by religion and I totally understand that because I'm turned off by religion too. Religion says get yourself straight and you might be accepted, but... Jesus came for relationship. He came to say, I, I want relationship with you. And that means you can come just as you are, as messed up, as screwed up, as sinful as you might be. He wants you. 
So if you're, if you're in this room in East Missoula today, in just a moment, I'm going to have you just lift up your hand and catch my eye. I want to pray with you before we close out this time together. If you're in Star Valley, I'm going to have you look at, at Zeb and catch his eye, and he wants to pray with you there in-house. But if you're in the room today and you just say, you know, I just want to make my relationship right with Jesus, because that's the first step to finding peace, is submitting to the Prince of Peace cool thing about God is he loves you so much that he made a way that he can take your sin and remove it from you. So if you say, man, I don't know that God could ever love me because of the stuff I've done. Can I tell you, he, he already does love you. He wants relationship with you now. So if you're here today and you just would say, yeah, I want to make my relationship right with God, would you do me a favor and just lift up your hand and catch my eye? I see you right there. Thank you for your honesty. Is there anybody else in the room today that would just say, will you remember me in this closing prayer? I just want to make my relationship right with God. I see you. Yeah, thanks for your honesty back there. I'll take one more moment. Is there anybody else? Yeah, bud. It's awesome. One more moment. Is there anybody else? Thank you. As we close tonight, I want to just take a moment and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I'm going to ask everybody, whether you raised your hand or you didn't, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer. If you repeat this prayer and you mean it, you're saying, I, I want to follow Jesus. You're saying, God, I believe you. I believe that your son came and died on the cross for me. I believe that, that I can have forgiveness of my sins. I also believe that you have peace for me. So let's all pray this prayer together. If you mean this, it changes everything. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace and that you have peace for me. Today I'm making the decision to follow you. Please forgive me of my sin. I love you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and that you rose again on the third day. Help me to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you give those a round of applause who prayed that prayer? For everyone else right now, I just really believe that there are some of you here today that you've been struggling to walk in peace. And maybe you haven't believed that that's even attainable to you. In these closing moments, there's prayer teams down here, they'd love to pray with you. If you just need to spend a little time at an altar just saying, God, help me to know that that's available and help me to walk in your peace. Whatever that looks like for you, I just don't want anybody to leave here in turmoil. Because God has not called you to that. He has peace for you. So let's trust him. We stand as we worship. The altars are open if you want to come and spend some time with him.
church will bear your light Lamb of flame, city bright King and kingdom come is what we pray We need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Oh, the anointing.
fills with new wine These broken vessels, Lord Fill us with new wine Cause where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom The kingdom is here I lay down my old flames To carry your new sing that out. Jesus, Jesus, 
precious Jesus, oh, for faith to trust him more. Well, let's sing that one more time. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for faith to trust him. We trust you today, Jesus, King of Peace. We receive your peace in this moment right now. Peace like a river. Peace like a river. Would you just stretch out your hands? Maybe that makes you a little uncomfortable. Let's just stretch out your hands with your palms facing up. I feel like the appropriate response to it, just the word that went out today is just to receive. He's given us an inheritance. It's there for our taking. Let's just receive it today. gift, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can choose, Lord, to grab hold of your peace, Lord. It's never far. It's right there for the taking. I 
pray, Lord Jesus, that you would open our eyes to the gifts that you've laid before us, Lord Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus, to what's available. We'd walk in your stillness. We'd walk in your stillness. Let your peace wash over us, God. We thank you for that today. God, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, amen.